Hey everybody, this is Chuck Billy from Testament. You're listening to the Phantasm Podcast. Hell yeah! Phantasm. Hey, this is Dr. Vincent West with the Phantasm Podcast, and my guest today, very excited to do this. Uh, he's a legend. I don't know where to start with it. Uh, my favorite thrash band ever when I was growing up was Testament, and with me today, Chuck Billy from Testament. Sir, how you doing? Good. How's it going, Vincent? Awesome. Thank you so much for doing this, man. You guys are on an incredible tour package uh, that's about to kick off. Um, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So, uh, he strikes back. yeah, man, it's what a, what a, what a great bill, death angel and Exodus. And then you guys, I mean, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, tell us about that. Um, well, you know, it's actually something we were trying to do for quite a, quite a many years, except for every band had different schedules and we just couldn't like make it line up. And, uh, so Last year in February, or not last year, 2020 in February, we finally made it happen across Europe. And it was the very first tour that, you know, we actually went out with the full Bay Area lineup. And it felt like like being at home, really. Oh, that's awesome. We, we knew all the bands, all the crew. And it was like, we were like our own little army traveling around promoting our Bay Area style sounds. And so it was awesome. And we had a lot of fun on that first tour over in Europe. And we had a lot of plans to do this all around the world if we could. And we just, it got held up for two years. And um, uh, we actually had an opportunity to go out earlier on this package, but it was going to be in smaller capacities because they were still limited, uh, the attendance. Sure. And everybody had to be a little more isolated in their own bubbles. And we all decided together that, you know, that that doesn't sound fun. We want to go out there and have fun and feel normal. So we, we put it off until we we're able to, like now, go out and do it. And so we're all looking forward to it because we had such a good turn turnout and tour and everybody kicked ass on the on the tour. We wanted we were like we were so excited to come to America because we did it in Europe first. We're like, I can't wait to go back home and play this across America. It's going to be awesome. So here we are, two weeks away, and uh, it's happening. So excited, um, and and what a great package too. Um, is it where were there w w when when putting this lineup together to do a tour like this? Were there bands that you guys wanted to put on this as well that maybe just weren't able to do it, or was it always just was it just Exodus, Testament, and, and uh, uh, Death Angel? Um, well, it was first just us three, and you know I won't let the cat out of the bag, but we're, we're planning a bigger Bay Area tour oh, wow. in the future, starting in Europe, you know, maybe 2023 or something like that. But, um, you know, because it, it just felt good because, we, you know, we're proud of the genre and being a Bay Area band for being here when, you know, Exodus and Metallica started that movement up in the Bay Area. Sure. You know, so, so, you know, we're, we're proud of that, and for all of us to come together as one is even stronger, and it, it just it's it feels great to do that. And all of us have you know thirty five plus years of playing and performing together. Yeah, it makes sense. It's such a, it's such a great package, and you know, of course, Exodus and Death Angel have such a great catalog, and you guys have such a vast and great catalog as well. It seems like the perfect tour package. It really is, and it's it's not like. We all sound the same. We all have our own unique identity, and I think that's the best part of it. But it's still, you know, all thrash. Well, it's... Um, I, I got to have... Uh, Eric came on the, the podcast to promote your all's last album, and I just wanted to tell you to pass along to him what a what an awesome experience that was for me, getting to talk with him. He's so fun to talk to. 
and uh, and, and what a kick-ass album as well. Um, just to ask you real quick, um, you guys have such a vast catalog. Is it hard when when you guys go out on the road to pick what what tracks to play, especially from like the back catalog? It's 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 always tough because it's kind of where the argument always starts. <laughs> There's, there's, we'll, we'll write up 20, 25 songs and we know we can't play them all, but we'll write them up and we'll get in the studio to start rehearsing and we'll say, ah, oh, that one doesn't feel right. Get that one out of here. And there's always one, two, three songs that everybody's like, why don't you play this? Or why don't we play that? And it's, it's really hard. And like, especially when you're promoting a new record, like, like this tour, we're playing, playing like 14 or 15 songs in the set. Uh-huh. Of course, we want to play three or four new ones. So now we're down to 11 songs out of like, you know, 150 songs that she's doing. <laughs> Man, that, that makes it really tough. So you're asking yourself, so what do we do? We got to play some classics. We got to play like Over the Wall, Into the Pit, you know, New Order. There's some songs that are always in our show. Sure. So now, so now we're down to about nine songs. Shit, now we got to pick nine songs. All right, so how do we do that? You know, so we kind of just process elimination. Okay, how about one off of this record, one off of that record, you know, maybe one of these. So we kind of just process of elimination, really, you know. Growing up with your all's records, I mean, it's for me as a fan, it's like I, you all would have to do a four hour set to get it on. <laughs> it's like. Yeah, you know, to, if you're going to try to appease every, because you got everybody from any kind of age group that listens to you, you know, discovering the classic records and then going forward. I always love the practice what you preach record. Like I would shit if you all played Greenhouse Effect live. I'd fall fall over dead. And then I love the Low album. I, I think that out because I'm a big death metal guy. So y'all brought James in, and I love that out. That album's so gritty. I was telling Eric about. It. I just think it's classic. And I don't know how much love you get for that record, but I love the Low album. It's a go to. Oh, yeah. Your vocals on that dude are so fucking... It's like thrash with death metal. Like, it's... Oh, it's so good. Well, you know what the change was then is that um, the ritual before, was the ritual was the record we did before that. Yeah. Um, up to that point, we were always tuned our guitars just a standard A440 tuning. Um, and when I first started in the band, I had much of a higher little pitchier voice. Sure. And I didn't know better. I just said, I just sang to whatever they played. I didn't know about the tuning or what people were tuning to. I just sang. And so when Alex left the band and everybody was doing these drop tunings, we're like, Eric, Eric tried it. And I'm like, man, this just feels so much better for me to sing. And this, this, it just makes me feel stronger. I got more range. So I realized, well, maybe we should have tuned down sooner and had more of our records. Maybe it would have sounded a little heavier. And so we, now we play all those early records tuned down. And so it's a lot more comfortable for me, and they just sound a lot more powerful. Oh, it's, it's you know, and, and just to... Your all's catalog, I mean, demonic. I mean, there, some of the some of the catalog that I, there are probably some folks probably have overlooked. You guys, I mean, you guys were putting just crushing albums out all through the nineties. I mean, obviously the eighties stuff is great, but I just love your whole catalog. Like it's, I was going back and revisiting the Gathering the other day, and you know, it's just there's so much good, so much good material. So yeah, I, I, I guess it's really hard to put a set list together. <laughs> oh man, it's crazy, you know. Um... But, you know, now that Dave's in the group, you know, of course, we have to pull out some more of the gathering stuff. Awesome. You know, so, Can you talk a little bit about... Oh, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about how that happened with Dave coming on board? Uh, this, this time? Yeah. Last time? Uh, this time. So, well, this time, you know, the stars lined up, you know, because we had talked to Dave about, you know, we had such a great time and wrote a good record doing the gathering. When we ever see each other, like, man, wouldn't it be fun to go back and play some of that gathering or, or just play the gathering to start to finish? And we said, man, that'd be awesome one day to be able to do that. But we weren't in a position to do that because we're like, that's not fair to Gene to say, hey, Gene, we're going to go play with Dave for six months. <laughs> we'll see you later. Right. So we didn't, it never happened. Um, so when this year, Gene had some stuff he had lined up for Dark Angel and some Death Hall, I think, and he put some stuff in the books and Testament didn't have our books locked in. We kept pushing tours back. 
So when it kind of finally came down to, okay, we Testament has some dates and Gene has dates, we found out. Now they're crossing paths. Sure. So we realized, well, we're not going to tell you no, Gene, don't do that. If you know, if you want to continue that, then we might have to bring in another drummer. And so that's kind of where it boiled down to was like, all right, we'll we'll get another drummer to play. And Gene said, all right, well, I'm just going to do what I have planned out and make some plans for the future. So it wasn't, we were like, good luck. Yeah, that's awesome, Gene, you know? And so, of course, our first thought would be, well, Lombardo would be great to get him to play, but we thought he's in Misfits, he's playing Suicidal, Mr. Bungle, Dead Cross, he's got all these things going sure. on. Sure. We have a conflict with Gene's schedule. Shit, Dave's got four bands. That's, <laughs> that's going to be tougher than hell. That's not going to work. So we started looking for drummers, and, uh, you know, honestly, we reached out to Lomb- uh, uh, Paul Bostoff because he knows the band. Um, Chris Adler was right at the front of the list as nice. well. He was, he was learning it. Um, and there was a lot of other musicians, great drummers, that sent us videos to check out. Um, and Gene wanted to do a press release, letting everybody know what was happening. So we said, well, hold on, Gene, let's... Let Testament gather a press release to, so we can do it at the same time. And so we chose a Friday at 9 o'clock Pacific time to make the press release. And no more than, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half later, after it was out, I get a text from Dave, and it just says, Lombardo, question mark. I'm like, holy shit. No, no, no way, really? So I called Dave and said, Dave, dude, I would have called you first, but man, you're in four bands, you know, how's that going to work? And he's like, oh, well, I mean, Misfits aren't playing that many shows and Suicidal is not playing that many and Mike Patton's not going out right now, so I'm looking for a gig. And we're like, perfect, we got one for you. <laughs> so we told him, you know, we have all these tours lined up, you know, can you, you, want, you want to sign off and be on these tours? And he said, yeah, let's do it. So next thing you know, we're like, all right, well, let's move forward with Dave. And so we did. And uh, and when we got to the first rehearsals, it was like old times, just hanging out, visiting with him and jamming again. So it's it's kind of like, you know, here we are back in the gathering again. That's so cool. I know a lot of people are excited to, to see him play with you guys, too, that probably never got to. Um so much fun. Tell us, uh, tell me about some of the uh, other things that Testament has going on right now that you guys have got out there. Um, um, as far as playing, I mean, we've got, now that things are getting normal, we got the Space Strikes Back here. We're going to do some summer runs and we're doing another Bay Strikes Back tour in Europe. Awesome. Um, but we got, you know, especially down during the COVID, you know, everything is online. The, survive and make money sure and so you know we got um you know i got my vape line out testament has a coffee out now dark roots of dark roast of earth awesome and we're actually talking to um a native american uh distillery up in washington state and they're going to be the first native american distillery in america period really and we're we're talking to them about creating a whiskey and a beer um that's going to get you know uh worldwide distribution so we're just we're finding other opportunities during COVID. I did some voiceover work for Marvel Comics. Really? Um, yeah. So, I'm a huge I'm a huge comic guy. Tell, tell tell us about that if you can. Uh, there's a series on Disney Plus Channel. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Called um, I believe it's called What If. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's, it's great. Marvel yeah. Series. Very good. Well, well, I played play Doctor Strangelove on in that one. Really? On my my episode. Yeah. That's awesome, so, Chuck. Doc, Doctor Evil Strange. That's who I was. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> um, so it was that was fun. I never did that kind of voiceover for something, but I they I went down to and it was during COVID, so that heavy protocol. But I drove down to the Disney Sound Stage and went in there. And um, the beauty about that was the the director was a Testament fan, and he actually came to me and had a part for me. And um, it was real fun and unique because he coached me my parts and my lines saying, okay, this voice, I want your practice what you preach voice, you know, the pitchy voice. So I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Gave that. All right, now this part, 
do like the song demonic use that voice there and so i use that voice so he kind of coached me using my songs that's so awesome it was, it was kind of fun and unique but it, he got exactly what he needed and uh it was a fun experience that's that's fabulous tell us about the coffee um it's a company called rock d the letter d coffee okay um our, we have new management. We got management probably you know, over six months ago, and they have a coffee company. So of course we're like, well, yeah, we want to do a coffee, and we came up with the idea. I'm not a dark roast coffee drinker, but they sent me a bunch of samples, and the dark roast tasted so good. So I said, I like that one. Um, so how about the dark roast of thra- or dark, dark roast of earth? <laughs> That's awesome. For it. <laughs> So that's what it is. We have the Dark Roast of Earth, and we'll be carrying it on tour selling it as well. It's fabulous. Um, and then tell us about your vape line. Yeah, I got the Chief. The Chief we've had a vape line through uh, LordVapor.com. Nice. Um, we've had products for going on for about four or five years maybe now. And now that we're getting back out on the road, we got a new current line coming out of vaporizers and everything's always evolving so they're getting better and better and um and we're doing some edibles we've got a ed- company that's going to create some edibles for us nice out of southern southern california so you know we're keeping busy you know it's very exciting um i was going to ask you uh as far as like is there is there a record that you wish uh you know, had been received a little better. Do you think out of your all's catalog, is there one that you that you? Because uh, I like I said, for me, it was always low. Like I had friends who are like, "You like this?" I'm like, "I fucking love it." So I, I didn't know if there was an album for you that's kind of like near and dear to your heart that you kind of feel like's overlooked. Uh, well, low is definitely one of those because you got to remember up to that record, up to the, the the ritual record, we were on Atlantic Records, so we we had A and R people like. You know, in our ears, saying, "Where's the next single? Where's the next radio song? Where's the next ballad?" And so we are creating songs based on what they wanted, and it really didn't represent Testament. Um, so once we finished, the low is going to be our very final record with Atlantic, right? And Alex had just left the band before that, and we had Johnny Tempesta come in the band, um, and and. We decided to tune down the guitars on that record the first time we started tuning the guitars down. Everybody was doing some drop tuning, so we started experimenting with it. And it actually was more comfortable for me singing. And I could do a little bit more range. I could get a little more depth and and still stay a little melodic too. So that record was something that really gave me time to get a little more, find out who I am as a singer and what, what my capabilities were. And it came out during an era where nobody, no radio cared or videos. There was empty. It was shit by then. Yep. So we felt like, okay, we, we put this strong, heavy record that we finally back, but where do we take it? Um, times were changing. So yeah, that was one record I thought that got overlooked. And then, you know, once that record was done, Atlantic was done. We came out with Demonic. We even went heavier. Yeah, you did. Atlantic it just went heavier. <laughs> So, you know, we kind of were finding our way, who we were, and experimenting with new ways to write music and for me to sing in a heavier sort of approach. And then we did The Gathering, and then that just kind of like, okay, now we culminated everything we do with the new tuning, the new style of voice, a little more death, uh, black metal blast beats, which Eric really liked. So, you know, it gave us a little more opportunity to experiment and and be and really find who we are. And I think the gathering, once we did that record, we said, okay, that's that's who Testament is right there. I tell you to keep going back to low. I remember buying that and correct me if I'm wrong on this. Did it not that, that album came out in October of ninety four, is that not correct? Uh, I'm not sure the month. I'm I'm not sure. I'm pretty I was working at a record store and I may have this I may have this memory mixed up, but I remember getting that thing close to Halloween. And I remember buying it on cassette. I'm, I'm, I'm getting up there myself, Chuck. But anyway, <laughs> I remember playing that thing in the car, and I was like, I literally played... I wanted to tell you this, and I don't mean to keep harping on the low album, but I played that cassette so much that it did not have the writing on either side of it anymore. 
Nice. And nice. it was so, man, Dog Face Gods, it was so fucking heavy. Like, it, the, uh, oh, uh, God, what was the, uh, the right, right through you. Oh, my God. That whole, right. yeah. dude, God damn. I mean, I remember the first time I listened, because I've been a fan, like I said, since, you know, way back, and I was like, Man, they have just taken this. And your vocals are so nasty on that album. It's just like... And then Demonic, you're right. It went right... It was like, here's chapter two of Low. Like, here's the... <laughs> well, the Low record was the very first record I sang one song with a death voice all the way through, Dog Face Gods. Oh. I'd, never done a, I'd never done a whole song all the way through like that. So that was kind of like, oh, okay. Some of the fans hated it, and some of the newer fans loved it. And I was like, okay, I can't please everybody, but, you know, it, it's just another notch in being creative. It's a masterpiece, man. That that low album, that thing is is so good. Um, yeah, like I said... Be- that demonic record was just over the top. It, oh, man. We brought Gene Hoagland in, and Gene was just like, okay, we got a heavy drummer. We got to be he- we gotta stick to being heavy. <laughs> and I even tried to be a little more melodic when we were writing those songs, but it just didn't feel right. Every time I'd, I'd write a melody and be a little more melodic, they'd, they'd be like, "All right, go death," and they're like, "Yeah, that's it. That felt that feels more natural." So, oh. you know, it, it, we we found our way into that that song or that record. It was so ballsy for you and for you guys to do that type of albums back then too, with all the grunge stuff going on and everything. I just I was so happy. I just I've never got to personally thank you. So thank you so much for those albums. It kept me going in the nineties. Like I, you know. Those those albums were so important. I think just with the subculture and culture and pop and everything that was going on back then, you guys just you, you took the thrash thing and you took it to another level. This is beautiful. Well, the thing was, you know, up to that point, being on Atlantic, they had A and R people pushing us on the radio. Radio stations were playing metal during drive time traffic. Metal was getting pretty good exposure uh, in, in the late eighties, early nineties. Uh, MTV was playing decent music, you know, at the time. But then it just legs chopped out as soon as that um, Seattle sound came in, sound on Nirvana, Pearl Jam. The radio stations just shifted gears, and next you know, middle was gone yep. off of radio, gone off MTV. And so for us, we we're like, okay, it's gone, and we wrote this heavier record, but. Where's it gonna go? Who's gonna hear it? Who's gonna see it? You know, it's right. We we're almost, we almost didn't care. We we're almost pissed off <laughs> just writing on. You know, screw everybody. Let's just write something heavy. You know. Well, it's it's a it's 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 a testament to your all's body of work, man. I'm telling you, I I love the '90s records. That you, the Gathering's brilliant. You know, low. Like I said, I could talk to you about that for hours. I just love the album. It was it was so refreshing, and I love. You know, Souls of Black was a great album. Practice Your Preach is a great. Album. You have this is great albums. You know, The Ritual is a great album. But it was it was so you know like like the uh, the EP that you did in between Low and uh, The Ritual. I remember getting that going. Man, this is this is pretty nasty. Like I enjoyed that EP quite a bit. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, that was something new. I think New Eyes of Old might have been on that, or which let's see which, what else was on that. Bunch of live cuts, I remember. The live thing, that's what it was with Paul Fostap on that. Oh my God, it's nasty. It's so good. So much energy. Apocalyptic City. Yeah, 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 yeah. Apocalyptic City. That's like it was driving me crazy. I couldn't think of the the, the guy with the blood coming out of the front. I remember buying that thing. But yeah, it's. it's, I I love the direction that you all took the band. Like, I don't know if anybody's ever talked about it. I I absolutely loved it. And it, it kept me going because it's like, wow, these guys. They're evolving. It's like Metallica was getting softer. You guys were getting fucking pushing the envelope, knocking, knocking to the heavens, you know. And it was like, God, this is so awesome. So I always felt so validated being a Testament fan when you guys just evolved like that. It was so refreshing was for me. It, it really was the tuning, I think, because I was young. I didn't know what a singer was. I was just singing to whatever the music they gave me. So when we started out, we tuned in that standard A440. Which, okay, I had to reach up a little higher to sing, you know, the voice. And then once we tuned it down, I was like, okay, I don't need to reach up there anymore. It's right here in my, my comfort zone. So the songs just came out heavier, you know, and 
it felt the music felt harder and heavier and just a little more nasty. So of course the writing just followed with it. Well, it's it's absolutely genius. I'm I'm so happy for you guys with the with the coffee and and the the the, the alcohol stuff you got working on, and um, you all have an amazing merch store too. If you guys haven't checked it out, it's awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, and that's a whole other thing, you know. I mean, merchandising, especially during COVID, that's kind of what a lot, a lot of bands survived on, you know, merchandise sales and um, and streaming shows, you know, so. Yeah, it's Here it's. We, are. We, we all made it through it. <laughs> so happy for you guys, and then the the tour you guys are going to be out with Death Angel and Exodus, and uh, it's that's exciting for everybody. These guys uh, get to do those shows together, um, and can't wait to see what the set list does, and and, and uh, see you guys with Dave again. Yeah, that's a hard thing. I mean, it's hard to put a set list together these days when we've got so many songs. Um, of course, we had to just play a little more of the Gathering because we got Dave. So. All right, let's see what we're going to play off the gathering. <laughs> um, but it's a, it's a really good set. It's a re- really good set. It's so exciting, and you guys uh, just—I mean, nothing specific. You guys working on it on the next album at all, or? Um, Eric has a lot of riffs, so we're ahead of the game. Um, you know, during COVID, he's been stockpiling riffs. So I think when we get on the road, usually at sound check is when Eric will just start playing a riff and not say anything that it's a new riff. And just see what everybody does and jump in and just start jamming. So nice. who knows? Maybe, maybe we'll create something out on the road. It's so exciting. Chuck, I can't thank you for taking the time to do this today. It's such an honor to talk with you. And uh, good luck with everything, with all your all's business ventures and everything Testament. And uh, Real quick before I let you go, I've got to ask because I'll, I'll kick myself if I don't do this. Can you tell me one fun story uh, while uh, touring low? It's a- um, I mean, it was fun though. I mean, we had Johnny Tempesta for a minute. So I mean, Johnny is a great guy. We've known him from Anthrax days. He was worked for Anthrax. You know, Glenn Avali is, I think we came in and jammed with us. So we had some fun stuff, some fun tours. You know, that's awesome, man. I like I said, I'm sorry I harped about it so much. I just I love that. I feel like that album gets no love by people I know. So I had to kind of talk about. But it. We are playing low on the tour. And we're playing are you? Low, so. Fuck yeah, dude! I'm all about. I'm all about it. <laughs> that just made my day. That's awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this today. I hope I get to talk with you again soon. And tell Eric I said hi, and tell him thank you. He did an amazing interview with me when that last album came out. And I just wanted to thank you guys for everything. Really appreciate you. Right on, Vincent. Hey, you have a you out there. awesome man. Have a great day. Thank you. You too.